Hello, my name is Sandra Hermosa and I work with the San Antonio Metropolitan Health District. I work in the Adolescent and Adult Immunization Program doing outreach and education. Um, today I would, I would like to share with you some information about the importance of immunizations for adults. Um, some of y'all might think, why do adults need vaccines? Um, you assume that since you got all these as a child that you don't need any more as an adult. However, some adults were never vaccinated when they were children and also newer vaccines were not available when some adults were children. Immunity has faded over time since many of your vaccines were done when you were a little child. And also as we age, we become more susceptible to serious diseases caused by common infections such as the flu and pneumonia. So also the other thing is some lifestyles can also put you at risk um, for certain infections or certain um, jobs, like if you work in the healthcare field. So you might need some immunizations that weren't available when you were a child. This chart is an example of the recommended adult immunizations. It does show all ages and as you can see it goes all the way through the age of 65 and beyond. And it may look like a really long list of shots, but a lot of them only occur once every 10 years, or once a year for a flu shot, or many of them are just one time only shots. This chart is also a listing of the same shots, however, it's um, based on a person's medical condition or their work environment to determine if they need certain vaccines. For instance, you have people with diabetes, heart disease, chronic lung conditions, or people that are healthcare personnel. You'll see the, in yellow the shots that would be recommended for those groups. To quickly go over some of the recommended adult vaccines, we have the flu shot, which is recommended one dose every fall, a pneumonia shot, which is once after the age of 65, you have a tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis, or better known as TD or Tdap vaccine, would be recommended once every 10 years. And then one of the newer vaccines is zoster or shingles, and that one is recommended for adults once after the age of 60. Other available vaccines um, that are more based on, again, your work environment, your medical history, or your risk level. Um, for instance, a hepatitis B vaccine would be most likely recommended in the healthcare field. Um, hepatitis A vaccine would be recommended for travelers to foreign countries where hepatitis A happens a lot. So you have the hepatitis B, you would need to get three doses over a six month period. Hepatitis A, two doses over a six month period as well. There's also the varicella or chickenpox vaccine. That one is if you've never had the chickenpox, you talk to your doctor to see if you need the vaccine. Um, then there's also the measles, mumps, and rubella, also known as MMR. And you get one dose if you've never had those diseases. And then there's also the meningococcal or meningitis vaccine. That also is one dose um, in a lifetime, and that's mainly if you're traveling to places where meningitis is prevalent. Um, there are also what we call our foreign travel or international travel vaccines that may be required or recommended depending on the country that you're visiting. Um, these can include, but definitely not all of them, would be yellow fever with a certificate, international health certificates, malaria prescriptions, meningococcal vaccine, typhoid vaccine, immune globulin, the tetanus and or Tdap vac uh, vaccine. There's also the MMR again, polio vaccine, hepatitis A, hepatitis B, a TB skin test, and the chickenpox vaccine. And again, these are just based on where you're traveling and what's required or recommended by the country you're visiting. Today I'm going to give you just a brief description of all the recommended adult vaccines that will be discussed later in detail in other lessons. Um, the first one is the influenza shot. It's recommended for adults 50 years and older and for people that are considered high risk and you should receive this on a yearly basis every fall. This picture shows you how germs are spread through the air whenever a person coughs or sneezes and of course it's highlighted. You don't usually see this spray of germs going out when people do cough or sneeze 
but um, it just demonstrates why the importance of cover your cough um, is out there or to cough into the crook of your elbow there to cover all those germs from spreading out to other people and into the air. These x-rays are x-rays of a person with, that show pneumonia in the lungs. What you see are the cloudy, um, the cloudy areas. Those are areas of the lungs that are filled with fluid and that can lead to death, especially in the elderly. They're just more susceptible to pneumonia. Um, one pneumonia shot would be recommended for people 65 and older. However, some people may have said, well, hey, I got one when I was younger, and that could be the case based on your medical history and your doctor's recommendation, um, but you wouldn't need a second dose until you're 65 or older, and two is the most that you should get in a lifetime. We do hear about people getting one every five years, every 10 years. That used to be the case with the older vaccine, but nowadays you just need one, or possibly two if your medical history states that. The next vaccine is tetanus. And this is a booster shot that adults should continue to receive every 10 years throughout their lifetime. And it's also commonly known as lockjaw because of the severe muscle spasms that people sometimes get in their jaw. And this picture is an example of a person with the muscle spasms of the back. Um, they, as you can see, they're very severe and they can sometimes lead to broken bones and broken ribs. The next disease is pertussis, or better known as whooping cough. And about two years ago, a new vaccine was introduced called Tdap. It's the TD, the tetanus, with pertussis protection. Um, whooping, case, whooping cough cases were increasing in infants in the community, and it was determined that they were getting it from the adults who were just having a bad cough. But in infants, they were not fully protected yet with their pertussis protection. So they came up with this vaccine for adults to take um, since we were the ones giving it to the infants. And again, you would just need to take one of these Tdap vaccines um, in place of one tetanus shot and then continue with your tetanus shot every 10 years from then on. Another new vaccine, as I mentioned, is the shingles vaccine, also called Zoster. And anyone who has had chicken pox as a child is susceptible to shingles in later life. Um, it's an itchy, painful rash that can cause severe nerve pain, um, which can be severe and some more severe in other people. And it even lingers after the initial rash is gone. That pain can, in the nerves, the damage has already happened, and so you can have that continued pain. The vaccine is recommended for people 60 and older. It's a one-time vaccine. And it does not completely prevent the shingles from occurring, but it decreases the pain that might be associated with shingles. And on this picture, you can see the common sites for um, shingles where the rash might appear. And it's usually in the trunk or the face. And it's um, kind of strange, but it like only falls on one half of the body, whether it's this side of your body or this side of your trunk. And as you can see, the lady in the picture has the shingles rash over her left eye which is a common sight. This picture um, depicts liver cancer that's caused by the hepatitis B infection. This lady is not pregnant. Um, that is her liver that's inflamed from the infection. And hepatitis vaccine it would be recommended based on a person's work environment, lifestyle, or other high-risk activities. The picture shows her um, at a time, it, I think they said that three months after, three to six months after that picture was taken, she did die from the hepatitis B infection. Um, and adults need to discuss with their doctor, you know, whether they need, uh, whether they're at risk for hepatitis B and if they need to receive the three doses over the six month period to be completely protected. Hepatitis A vaccine is much like hepatitis B. It causes inflammation of the liver. And the man in the picture is showing um, the white of his eyes are actually yellow from jaundice, and his skin also has a yellow tone to it. And that's a common symptom of hepatitis A. And then you can see on the map, that was from 2006, which was the most current numbers that we had available, but it shows you the prevalence of hepatitis A throughout the world. And the United States is pretty low. We have less than 2% of chronic hepatitis A infection. 
Um, but um, I know in the 2005 map, Alaska and the upper parts of Canada weren't, were white as well. Now you can see the upper parts of Canada are, have a high prevalence of hepatitis A, and Alaska has moved into the intermediate category, whereas a year before that, they were white. They had a low prevalence. So it's on the increase. And again, adults should talk with their doctors to determine if they're at risk for this or if their community is at risk and whether they should receive the two doses over a six-month period. Next is um, pictures of chickenpox um, in adults. This is um, the chickenpox vaccine is available for any adult who has never had the chickenpox disease or the vaccine, and they should get two doses at least 28 days apart to protect themselves. Um, most adults have had the disease growing up as a child, so there's no need to get the shot, but it's more serious in adults. The disease is more serious in adults, so it would be highly recommended if you know that you have not had the chickenpox. Um, it can be deadly, just like it can be deadly in children, but in adults seem to get a more severe case of it, so more lesions throughout the body. And as you can see, they can be anywhere. That shows the back and the face, but it can even be in your mouth, um, you know, throughout your whole body. Meningococcal or the meningitis vaccine would be um, another vaccine recommended for adults who would be traveling or living in areas where the meningitis is prevalent. It's only one dose that's needed throughout a lifetime, and it's very rare to occur, but when it does, it can be life-threatening very quickly and it can cause loss of limbs in a short period of time. As you can see, the first picture with the foot shows bleeding that's under the skin, and that can eventually lead to loss of circulation and gangrene, and that's where people start having to lose their limbs if they recover from it because that part of that body has um, died. And so the other one, the legs there, that's a rash that forms from the infection that's in the bloodstream. And again, it, that can just travel through the whole body and cause the whole body to become inflamed. This one here is our MMR vaccine. Most adults born before 1957 are assumed to have had these diseases, so there's therefore no need for them to have the vaccine. But if you have a history um, of, that cannot be shown that you've had these diseases, it would be recommended to at least get one dose of the MMR. And what it is is the measles is a rash, the uh, rubella is also a rash, usually with a high fever. And in the picture on the middle and the bottom is a person with swelling of the salivary glands, which is a common symptom of mumps. So you might still be asking yourself, why should I get vaccines as an adult? Um, actually, getting vaccines would protect you and everyone around you, whether it's your spouse, your children, your grandchildren, your friends, coworkers, whoever you hang out with. Um, would be getting protected, so, or you're protecting yourself from them if they haven't had the vaccines and they get the disease. And San Antonio Metropolitan Health District has two adult clinics that offer counseling and administration of a vaccine to a person who might need them for health reasons or for international travel. Our staff can counsel you and provide the recommend, recommended or required vaccines as needed. Of course, there's always fees involved, and unfortunately, with the Metro Health District, we do not accept any kind of insurance for foreign travel or adult immunization, so therefore, the patient does have to pay the cost of their vaccines. These vaccines, anywhere from the TB skin test costing $10 to a zoster vaccine costing $210. Um, so there's a wide range of prices there. We do charge a $15 administration fee per visit. And then also for foreign travel appointments, there's a $25 consultation fee. This here lists both of our clinics. We have our main travel and adult clinic, which is downtown at our main immunization site. That's at 332 West Commerce. And then our second location is called our Valley View Adult Clinic. That's at Blanco Road and West Avenue. It's located inside one of the City of San Antonio service centers, so it's not just strictly a clinic. Um, appointments are required for all of our visits, and the phone numbers are listed there for you. This lists our contact information. Um, if you have any questions about adult immunizations, those are those first two numbers, 
or 207-8867. Our administrative offices are also available. Our main clinic number and then also recorded information if you need to find out where our clinics are, what their hours are, um, that's 207-8750. Thank you very much.